Ya hello! CK here and bringing you freshly picked pros. Let's go! Before we begin into the video, first we will analyze the writing theory and then we'll talk about the different examples to fully understand what I mean by this. So let's begin by talking what do you do now that you get a great idea? Shall we begin? So you have this billion dollar idea. A wide set of casts that you want to make your life miserable. That is amazing and I am proud of you. But now what? Before you get trigger happy with your writing, I would advise you to stop and halt your horses. This allows you to have a break and this break allows you to craft a filler, a compass, and a guide in which case when things get dicey, you have something to lean back on. And having this kind of break also saves you from the pain of wanting to throw your story together when you hit the writer's block. Trust me, I've been such a victim of this and I remember that my current work, work in progress before I get really satisfied, it took me five tries because I was just writing out of nowhere. So throughout the years, I've learned to subject your story idea into the pressure test. The pressure test basically answers these three things. First, do you know what your story wants to convey? Second, are my characters important enough that the story cannot function or let alone exist without them? And third, do I know what is my endgame? So CK, what in the heavens are you prattling about? Well, we will find out in a few seconds. Numero uno, do you truly know what your story is about? So this grand idea of yours is usually a premise. A premise, it is just a one sentence explaining your story in the simplest way possible. For example, Genshin Impact, it is about, it is about two travelers and, a, and they are trying to find their lost sibling along the way. So at first, it just sounds very generic, there's no meat yet and it's very brittle and there's no foundation yet. But as you go further to the story, the amazing storyline of Genshin Impact actually reveals that there's more than it meets to eye. And I'm not gonna be a spoiler because it is such an amazing game. So to understand what your story truly means to you, first you gotta ask yourself these questions. Number one, what is your team? What do you want to tell your readers? What do you want your readers to feel when reading their story? For example, I would say um, The Lord of the Rings. Tolkien, the theme of it probably is about friendship and cam camaraderie. Can never pronounce that word. And it is very evident, like throughout the story, that there's fellowship, there's brotherhood. For goodness sake, the first book is literally says fellowship of the ring. So if I got that wrong, uh, please don't flay me. Don't cancel me. So ask yourself, what is the theme? By knowing what kind of message you want to tell your readers, it will be easier to place those um, well-placed symbolisms along the line. It, trust me, it is so much easy. So try to step back and think for a while. Think of these questions and when you finally have this question, move on. Second, are my characters important enough that it can that the story cannot exist it without them. So in stories, we read them because the characters are very interesting. Truth to be told, we won't like reading about a generic Joe unless there's something endearing about them. Did a scene in The Perks of Wallflower, our boy Charlie is very socially awkward and in real life, we wouldn't really notice him because for as for the title, it is about a wallflower. So he easily blends into the background. But in this story, we really notice him because lo and behold, he's the main character. And there are such amazing traits that really distinguish Charlie from the rest of the cast. So ask yourself this question. What is this one thing that my character can stand out? Can my story exist without them? There are as I read through my writing courses, there's two ways of crafting a story, plot-centered and character-centered. 
plot centered basically like the characters are pulled forward by the plot and there's a lot of things that are happening and a lot of action and crazy things happening think about assassin's creed like um throughout the novel there's just like this grand adventure that trick that pulls the characters into action the second one is character centered basically they the plot is more mellow i would say and the, we are more invested on the character development of these characters think of clara and the sun basically the premise is just she's just an artificial friend and we see how she develops as she observes the daily life and we are drawn to that world in my opinion i would suggest doing both because if it's we're just focusing on character centered then it is simply we're just writing in a vast space unless it's written really well from my experience it's really hard to write character centered ones because i want i want action at the same time with plot centered events or plot centered stories if we're not that invested with characters it is just simply a series of events that we don't really care about i think i'm gonna get flamed on this one but think of history books we're not really invested in it unless you can feel the characters in it like to me it's like numbers and events but because i don't personally know these people i don't really care so but your story will be different so think of these and learn to craft how to make the most compelling character and trust me you will thank yourself for having such grand characters lastly or third do you know what is your end game by knowing the end <laughs> no matter how lost you get into the writing process you will never be lost because you know what you want to achieve but it's kind of like in life like if you know what career you want to do you know what are the steps to take to achieve that goal so i'm thinking of like um, a story idea uh, off top of my head oh let's go with harry potter so with harry potter like right off the bat we have a glimpse that the uh, the end game of that is defeating he who must not be named or lord Voldemort, because fear of the name itself increases the fear right off the bat um we get these store we get these subplots wherein it makes harry um stronger and his knowledge of how to be how to defeat lord Voldemort increases like throughout the story like throughout the arcs the different books everything is connected by the sole purpose of defeating lord Voldemort, and it doesn't stray away from them and trust me for sure like during the writing process there are time there are um uh, trash out plots but this, the end game remains the same so ask yourself this what do you want to achieve with your story and what kind of message that also ties into number one what is your ending in my work in progress i already know what will be the ending of my characters like i don't even know the whole story right it began but i'll already know what's going to happen with with my characters and since i already know them it acted as like my goal it acted as like a treasure so no matter how many times i rewrote my work in progress i wasn't lost because i know what i want so ck enough of that writing theory let's stop with that one and let's example one of the famous literature harry potter let's subject harry potter into a pressure test so numero uno what did jk rowling wanted to write I solemnly want to believe that she wrote about a story about friendship, bonds, loyalty, and coming of age. The reason why Harry Potter is so successful is because it feels like we're part of the journey. It feels like we're growing up with them because each year they're like turning, like they're like growing up. And I would also want to say that her team is about finding hope in times of darkness. And this is more relevant during Deadly Hallows, wherein Harry's allies are one by one dying and they're having a falling out with their friendship. But Harry still persists because he truly believes that he can defeat Lord Baltimore. So second, characters. 
can the characters of Harry Potter, like, does, it, does the story need it? Do the characters make or break the story? Then I would say yes. Because say what you want about Harry not being sorted to Ravenclaw or sometimes he has these dumb moments. But I honestly think that they grew on me. We see the progress of the trio and we see their banter, their wittiness, their argument and it just feels so real. And I, in turn, I get so invested in their journey because I care about these characters. And without the trio, without without them and probably someone being the main character, I don't think I would be invested as I am with our golden trio. So third, what was the end goal? Ever since the first book was released, we were already introduced by Lord Voldemort. Like at the beginning, we already had this hint, this foreshadow, that the end of everything is going to be Harry versus Voldemort. Harry Potter stood the pressure test and that is why it is so famous right now. Includes this video. I really do hope that you've learned something and in this, the purpose of this video is just to guide lost writers because I truly know the pain of wanting to throw your story idea because you have no idea what you're writing about. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment it below. If you have any suggestions or some topics that you want to get further clarity, my suggestion box are truly open. My socials are linked on the description box. Feel free to follow them. It is totally up to you. But if you do follow them, you'll get like weekly um weekly condensed version of my videos and some writing prompts and lots of goodies that sometimes i post about and thank you so much for um thank you so much for listening it truly means a lot and i really hope that i get to see you in the next video which i aim at during sundays huh cross fingers <laughs> pretty sure along the road i will see this video and be like yeah that aged really well so highlight the subscribe button and cross out the like button. I hope to see you next time. CK signing out.